Good evening, everybody, I think. Is it evening? Yeah, just about. Good evening. Welcome to St. James in the City. My name is Jerome. I'm part of the team here at St. James. And wow, what an occasion it is to celebrate today. Isn't it wonderful? I'm just um, Anya, Emily, Isabel, Lewis, and Joe. Yeah? Should we give a round of applause? They're not back yet, but it's still great. It's so great. Um, how amazing it is to see them uh, declare their faith uh, in Jesus, being baptized today, saying yes to Jesus. How incredible um, is that? How incredible is that? Isn't it good to see? Um, earlier on today, we also saw some people get baptized as well, some, some older folk perhaps uh, get baptized in the morning. And it's such a celebration, really, uh, and a reminder of the goodness um, of Jesus Baptism is about following Jesus. Jesus, the one who loves us, the one who is for us. Um, and today I'm going to speak briefly, not for very long, because um, you know, I want to get onto pizza. I'm going to talk briefly about baptism, what it means for us. Uh, perhaps say a, a thing or two uh, to our baptism and renewal uh, candidates. Um, but I guess um, for those of us who have been Christians for a long time, this might be a good reminder for us. Um, and for those, perhaps, um, who are thinking about faith and thinking about uh, what that journey with Jesus can look like, hopefully there'll be some things for us too. Is that all right? That's what we're going to be talking about um, today. What does it look like today for us to follow Jesus? And so, oh, they're just coming in. Exciting. Wonderful. Yeah. Clap them again. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> So here we are, we're in our, we're in our Bible text, and um, if you've got a Bible with you, do keep it open. I'll be referring to this uh, in a moment. Um, have it on your phone if you're a scroller. We'll be talking about this text. Um, at St. James, at the moment, uh, we're preaching through the book of Mark, um, and we're kind of at the middle point of Mark. We're going to have a break for the Christmas season, we're going to pick it up again. Um, and it's been amazing, really. Mark is one of the four Gospels that speak about the life of Jesus. Um, and they give us an insight into who Jesus is. Um, and that question, who is Jesus, has been kind of the main focus, perhaps, of the first half of Mark. Um, and one of the big questions that they're discussing here is who is Jesus. And I'm going to just read this for us and just draw some things out that might be helpful for us um, in our discipleship. Um, and the first thing I want to say is this, is that following Jesus means grappling with who Jesus is. Those who've been disciple, those who've been baptized today, we're going to grapple with who Jesus is. Let's have a look here. Um, chapter 8, verse 27. Let's go to it together. So Jesus and his disciples went around the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, and here's the important question Jesus wants to know the answer to. Who do people say that I am? Who do people say that I am? Who do people say Jesus is? It's a good question, isn't it? Is Jesus a religious teacher with something interesting to say, perhaps? Uh, somebody with a philosophy that you might agree with or you may not agree with, might have something to say that might be interesting. Perhaps someone on Instagram or TikTok, whatever our young people use these days that I can't stay up with, uh, that you might follow because they, oh, they might have something t interesting to say about a certain political issue. Is Jesus someone like that? Perhaps someone who, uh, who entertains us, right? Who we, oh, that was interesting. All right, on to the next one. Someone you can engage with on your own terms. Who who do people say that Jesus is? Let's, let's keep reading and see how it kind of goes out. So verse 28, they replied, some say John the Baptist, great person. Others say Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. Not bad things. Um, but then Jesus kind of turns, and you can imagine the camera. This was a film. Imagine the camera just kind of turning in on Jesus a little bit here. And in verse 29, Jesus asks a really important question. But what about you? Who do you say that I am? What about you? Who do you say that Jesus is? It's a powerful question for us to consider, isn't it? You see, as we journey with Jesus, we encounter so many people 
uh, that tell us about Jesus, right? Perhaps when we were young, uh, we might have grown up in, in, with parents or guardians or friends at school. Perhaps you were engaged with church in midweek groups. You might have you know, engaged and heard a little bit about Jesus, had a taster perhaps at Christmas maybe. As you get older, you might start to research for yourself a little bit. You might come to Christian Union, perhaps, or uh, you might have a look on YouTube, learn a little bit more, go to Connect Group. These are all good things. But there does come a point when Jesus asks us that question. You've been hearing us, who do you say that I am? When we have to decide what we think about Jesus, who do we say Jesus is? And for those here being baptized today, those here uh, renewing their vows, and for many of us, we have come to know and to trust, just as Peter declares here in verse 29, you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. And what, what does that mean, the anointed one? The one that the people of God have been waiting for. The one that sets us free from oppression, free from death gives us a right relationship with God, ourselves, and with others. The one who heals those that have broken hearts, sets captives free, heals the blind, makes the paralyzed walk again, even has the power to forgive sins. This is the Messiah. Peter had began to witness these things, has begun to see these things. He's witnessed something powerful in the life of Jesus, that he was able to declare, you are the Messiah, you are the King of the world. And that's what we're here to declare now in baptism. Is that right? That's right. Jesus is the King um, of the world. And I want to say, you know, for those who have been baptized today, renewals, um, following Jesus means grappling with who Jesus is. Okay? And for all of us here, that's what, that's what it means. We need to grapple with who Jesus is. So I do encourage you guys, specifically who are in the water today, don't stop continuing to grapple with who Jesus is. Don't stop. Don't stop grappling with who Jesus is. But not just for them, for all of us. I encourage you, if you're here, if you've you've never read any of the Gospels before, if you've never had a look of who Jesus is, I encourage you to read them. They're here in the Bibles. You can borrow a church Bible. You can look on your phone. I encourage you, have a look. Mike looks at me. Don't, don't let people steal our Bibles. Um, have a look. See who Jesus is for yourself. Have a look. Uh, come to Alpha in the spring. We have a course called Alpha uh, where we kind of explore Christian faith. And we get to explore who Jesus is. Come, explore. Who do you say that I am. Jesus will reveal yourself, himself to you. So following Jesus means grappling with who Jesus is. Are you following me? Fantastic. Good. Grappling with Jesus. Um, and the second thing I want to say uh, to, our, to our young people and to all of us, um, and many of you will know this, and you know, I, it was such a privilege to hear some of our young people come up and actually share their stories, right? These people, are they know what the Christian life is about because they're living it. And the second thing is this, that following Jesus is tough sometimes. It's difficult sometimes. I I love this story. Uh, So, you know, so Jesus is asking, you know, who do you say that I am? And and Peter, one of the disciples, kind of speaks up. He clearly had seen the goodness of God. You know, we're on chapter 8 now. They've seen Jesus heal. They've seen Jesus do amazing things. And Peter stands up and declares the first time you really hear this, really, in this, in this book, in this chapter, in this um, book of the Bible, you are the Messiah. It's amazing, this declaration of faith. And then they all lived happily ever after. They all sang and danced. No one ever did anything wrong. No one ever, Peter never got anything wrong again. It was all perfect. No, of course not. That's, the, <laughs> that's not what happens at all. Um, absolutely not. The Christian life is hard. Uh, we read here in verse 31 that Jesus describes what he will do. You know, what, what does this Messiah have to do? He's going to face so much pain, so much anguish. And Peter, the one who just took that step of faith, starts to rebuke Jesus and be like, oh, you don't need to do all that stuff. I'm really uncomfortable with this stuff. And even to convince Jesus that he's wrong. 
Now, <laughs> Jesus says to Peter, I love it here, verse 33, just to give us the insight of what's happening inside Peter. You don't have in mind the concerns of God, but the only human concerns. Now, I'm not judging Peter, okay? So I just want you just to be kind to Peter, okay? I'm not judging Peter. Um, because actually, it is hard to follow Jesus. It is hard to follow Jesus. I'm not, I'm not judging Peter for that. Actually, following Jesus is about walking on a path of vulnerability and of pain. I don't know kind of what kind of weeks you've had. You know, many of us here are Christians, and we know what it means to follow Jesus. Sometimes doing what is right, even in the face of obstacles, is hard. To follow Jesus means to, to walk through the troubles with Jesus rather than running away. To trust not only in a, whole, in a human way of seeing things, perhaps to f- fight or flight, right? Uh, but to trust in Jesus, to be loving, to be forgiving of others, to be forgiving of yourself. So importantly, when you fall, to get up again, to stick with Jesus, to be the one who is generous, to be the one who speaks to that person nobody else speaks to, to be the one who, who takes um, the, the discomfort for the sake of others. That's what Peter was, you know, not all about. Yeah, I, I want the fun, I, I want the joy, I want the, I want the glory perhaps, but, but actually I don't want the pain of having to follow Jesus. Jesus went to the cross. In verse 34, Jesus says, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. I don't know how this kind of lands for you, this idea of taking up your cross but I do want to encourage you, uh, for that, it might seem a bit big right now, but actually, it is a lifetime's work. You know, we're only in chapter 8, right? We've been half the book already, they've been doing this, right? It's okay. It's just it's a journey of faith. This is a lifetime's work. And for some of us, we're at the beginning of that journey, but sometimes we're in the, for some of us are in the middle of that journey. Uh, of this is daily, picking up our cross and following Jesus. So I don't know how that lands for you. I did say I wouldn't talk too long. But I would like to draw some things out I think might be helpful for us. What does it mean for us to consider Jesus and to pick up our cross and follow him? So here's some things for us. The first one is to stick to Jesus. Stick to Jesus. God does not require us to be perfect people. Trust me, you won't find it anywhere in the Scripture. God isn't not looking for perfect people. God wants people who are going to walk closely with him. Who, when they fall, will get back up again. Just like Peter. Yeah, just like Peter. The one he thought he had it all, but literally a few verses later, got it wrong. Totally fine. Jesus will pick you back up again. I, I'm really drawn and, and I'm kind of touched by this story, really. Uh, because in our kind of society, in our context, when people make mistakes, you know, it's so easy just to cancel them, right? Or just to, just to get rid of them, right? That's not what Jesus does here. So when Peter uh, makes the mistake, when Peter completes it, completely gets it wrong, Jesus doesn't say to him, all right, Peter, I gave you a chance, just get lost now. <laughs> Actually, no, Jesus corrects Peter and brings him back into community. Not, thus, not just this time, but over and over and over again. And you might be sitting here thinking, oh man, maybe I'm a little bit like Peter. I keep making mistakes. My encouragement is to you is that Jesus transforms the life of Peter. And yes, here in chapter 8, it's kind of a bit silly. <laughs> and we're all like, oh yeah, I totally get that. But if you read the book of Acts just later on in Scripture, you will see what kind of person Peter becomes when the Holy Spirit transforms Peter's life. He grows in faith. And that's the kind of life that God is calling us to, one where we grow in faith. So it doesn't matter if you're one year old, if you're 15, if you're 100 years old, we can all grow in faith with Jesus. So stick to Jesus. 
And the second thing um, is that you don't have to do this alone. Okay? Uh, for those of us who have been baptized today, and all of us really as we're thinking about this, we do not have to do this alone. Firstly, Jesus walks with us. Jesus walks before us. Pick up your cross and follow me. All right. This is the way that Jesus is walking. Uh, and I'm encouraged that Jesus, you know, Jesus didn't leave behind a bunch of teachings for us. He didn't leave behind like a list of rules of how to live your life. Actually, Jesus formed a community. We call that the church now. Those early disciples, and as they grew and as they grew, all of us are part of that community. You know, the, the texts that we have, the New Testament, all the things that are in there, are there to serve the church. They're there for us. We are God's gift to each other. So when we are struggling through life, and trust me, there will be times when we struggle through life. Of course there will be. Uh, but we can hold each other up. So I encourage you young people, you know, get stuck in at the youth group, right? Whatever you're doing in school and your CUs and things like that, get, get stuck in with that. Band together, look out for each other, pray for each other. And for those of us that aren't in school anymore, <laughs> uh, might, what might that look like for you perhaps at work or at home? What, what does that look like? Um, it's not just about Sunday. Sunday is, you know, it's just a celebration of who we are um, as a church. Actually, it's an everyday fight together that we have. Jesus has formed his church, and we're all a part of that. So let's look after each other. Is that all right? Can we do that? One of the ways we're going to look after each other is by having pizza later. But do say hello to someone perhaps that you don't know, right? Let's be really welcoming to each other. So stick to Jesus, and you don't have to do this alone. Um, and perhaps this one might be uh, for some of our older folks, maybe, maybe. And maybe it's a little bit for our younger folks too. Um, Jesus calls us to a life of service. In a moment, I think Mike's going to come kind of after we have a moment to respond. Um, and he's going to get um, the, the baptism candidates to talk about what it means to follow Jesus. Um, and I think sometimes, and I, and I definitely think I'm, I'm guilty of this myself, I put my hands up. We can kind of think that following Jesus is about all the big stuff. You know, it's, it's about the big crowds, it's about the crazy stuff, it's about the crazy testimonies. Um, but actually, serving small is not small with Jesus. Jesus calls us to serve others. We don't need to be superheroes, but Jesus calls us to serve him and to serve others. Um, and that means wherever you are, you can follow Jesus' example. So if you're at work, what does it look like for me to be a blessing at work? If I'm with my family or my friends, what does it look like for me to be a blessing in this place? How can I follow Jesus, the one who loves, the one who goes before us, the one who cares? How can I follow that way of being in this place? It might be as simple as making somebody a cup of tea. When you do that, you are following Jesus. When perhaps someone, you know, isn't settled in and they just need someone to talk to you and, and you're that person to say, hey, you're all right. You're following in the way of Jesus. So I don't know where you find yourself um, in your week, at home, at school, when you meet people in the street. We are salt and light. And actually these little things start to become profound things when we give them to Jesus. So stick to Jesus. You're not in this alone. And serving small is not so small. And so we're going to respond to this uh, in a moment. And I wonder if I can invite the, uh, the band back up. If that's okay. And we're just going to have a moment to respond. And... I might just get us to do something a little bit practical, if that's okay with you. Are you happy to be practical today? I've got verbal agreement from most of the people in the room, so that's okay. Um, the reality is, is that in baptism, we get to follow Jesus. We get to follow the one who loves us, who actually died for us, who makes a way for us to live life together. I love those words that Mike was saying, buried with Christ and raised with Christ. All right. 
saying no to the things um, that spoil, right? To the selfish way of living, to the way of just thinking about myself, just thinking about my own needs. And saying yes to Jesus, to thinking about the others, to use all that I have to be a blessing um, to others. It's an incredible thing that Jesus is calling us into. I'm not sure how that will land for you, uh, but I guess there's perhaps a way that we can um, do something quite practical. So as the band starts to play, why don't we stand if we're able? I'm really drawn um, by that phrase, who do you say that I am? I recognize that we're all um, in different places in our journey with faith. Some of us, you know, it might be our first time in church, quite literally. Some of us may be here for, for eons. And we're all on this journey of faith with Jesus. Who do you say that I am? Maybe you're just not sure who Jesus is. Can I encourage you? The disciples weren't sure either. You were in the right place. We're a community of people who are learning, who are growing, who are trying to work out who Jesus is. You're in the right place. If that's you, we'd love to chat with you. Do contact to me or one of the team, and I'd love to point you to Alpha in the New Year. It's a great way, of course, just to spend some time really working out, weighing it up. Who is Jesus, and what does that mean for me? Um, and for all of us who are on this journey, you might just need a reminder, really, of the grace of God. The fact that uh, Jesus is calling us out of darkness into light. Um, so the band are going to play and going to sing. And um, I wonder if we could just come out of our seats and just, uh, just come over over here and just have a look at this water. Come on. Come on. Let's gather around a little bit. It's okay. It's going to be all right. I'm not going to splash anyone, I promise. So just have a look at this water. Just have a look, have a look, have a look. It's relatively warm. It's a little bit dirty. Uh, but this water, I promise it's just water, is a symbol of the fact that Jesus loves us. Jesus is for us. Um, and wherever we are in that faith journey, all of us can come to this water. so I don't know where you're at with Jesus. You know, maybe you're here and you just want to say, you know, Jesus, I, okay, I see this water. I, I get it. There's something here. I, uh, maybe I need to learn some more. H- help me with that. Or, you know, m- maybe there's something uh, in your life that you know you just need to just bring to Jesus and say, Jesus, I, I need you in this. That's uh, so my encouragement to you now. I'm just going to have a moment. I'm going to pray. I'm going to bring you before Jesus. I'm not going to splash you with water. Um, and I encourage you just to come. Look at the water. Notice its dirtiness. Life is not perfect. All the analogies here. Uh, and why not put your hand in? And you may just want to just like crush yourself on the head. Yeah. Just say, Jesus, I need to receive from you. I've actually been baptized before. It's a way of you remembering your baptism. Or perhaps if you're not baptized, just a way of saying, God, I, I want to receive from you. Is that okay? Okay, so I'm going to say a prayer. And then you can engage with the water. The prayer team is going to be over there in a moment too. And we're going to sing together. Is that okay? It's not complicated. Good. Let me pray. So God, I thank you so much that you are the living God. Lord, you love us. God, that you're for us. God, I thank you that you encourage us uh, to walk with you on this journey. And God, that no matter how many times we fall, Jesus, we can get up uh, because we're following you. We want to stick with you, Jesus. And I pray for all of us now. God, would you reveal to us what the next step is for us, whether that's coming onto Alpha, whether that's having a conversation with, a, with somebody about faith, whatever that looks like, God, would you show us the next step for us? And God, I do pray, Lord, that as we engage now, Lord, as we touch this water, Lord, as we cross ourselves and remember what you've done for us, Lord, would you meet with us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
brilliant. Go for it. Get yourself some splash. Don't splash anyone else. You might want to just take a moment just to look at it. Go for it. Go for it. Um, And if you would like prayer for anything that we've been talking about or anything else, do come around the corner. We'd love to pray. And then later on, Mike's going to finish the service for us. Okay.